I've been waiting six months to get my hands on these AR glasses. These are the Xreal One Pros, and they come with a redesigned optical engine that's now 40% smaller, it cuts down on reflections almost entirely, and it enables a 57 degree field of view, which takes you from a perceived screen size of 140 inches on the Air 2 Pros up to a whopping 171 inches at a perceived four meters away. Now, to put it to the test, we ran a series of comparisons that you probably won't find anywhere else, from screen size to anchor mode tests with our specialized through the lens shots, to audio, privacy, and even side profile comparisons using our test heads to help you decide if these new AR glasses are actually the ones you've been waiting for. Now, as a quick recap, just in case you didn't catch our last video on the standard X-Real ones from a few months back, the Pro model is basically built on the same foundation. You get X-Real's custom X1 chip in here, which finally brings native three degrees of freedom tracking to the glasses themselves. This means that you get things like follow mode where the screen will gently follow and stabilize with your head movements. Whereas before without three off tracking, you would see all the little jitters and like micro shakes due to essentially having a screen strapped to your face. The X1 also enables anchor mode where you can pin the display to a fixed spot relative to your head. So it's basically like having a virtual TV or a monitor. And then when you connect it to a computer, you also get an ultra wide mode, which like the name implies, simulates having an ultra wide monitor. Now, a lot of this was technically possible before having the native 3 off on here with devices like the x Beam or the Beam Pro. But now, because they are built right into the glasses, it means that they're plug and play, meaning you can use it with your phone, you can use it with your laptop, or even gaming devices like the Steam Deck or ROG Ally. But on top of the X1 chip, you also get three stages of electrochromic dimming, which actually does a really good job at blocking outside light. And you get these Bose tuned speakers, which honestly I feel like are kind of underrated since they bring a huge step up in audio quality compared to the Air 2 Pros. But just take a listen for yourself. All right, now that we are all caught up, let's talk about what's actually new with the pros, with it all coming down to this redesigned optical engine, which as you can see, are a lot slimmer than the standard ones, which not only make the glasses look more advanced, but they also come with some practical benefits. So they fold up more compactly than before, and maybe more importantly, when you actually wear them, because they're slimmer, they sit closer to your face, where they just don't protrude out as much, which I feel like has always been an issue with AR glasses like these. Now, when it comes to the actual visual experience, this is where you're getting the biggest upgrade. And there's really two big benefits here. So the first one is reflections. These lenses pretty much eliminate the reflections that I called out in our last video with the standard ones, where on those, you would sometimes see reflections from stuff directly underneath the glasses, like a bright shirt or a desk. But on here, they're basically gone. And then the second thing, and probably the thing that most people are looking at these for, is that wider 57 degree field of view which takes you from a perceived screen size of 147 inches on the standard x real one, which by the way is already massive, up to a crazy 171 inches on the pros. And yeah, this screen is definitely bigger. Like it's not super obvious when you first switch from the standard x real one to the one pros, but after going back and forth, you do start to appreciate just how much bigger this new screen actually is. But what I found to be even more interesting was how the optics actually changed how I use these day to day. Where on the standard models, even the Air 2 Pros with the beam, I mostly found myself using the follow mode to stabilize all the little micro vibrations because when I switched it to anchor mode, I'd often run into cropping or ladder boxing when I moved my head, especially side to side, which to me just always kind of broke the immersion. But with the One Pros, I've actually been using anchor mode almost exclusively. And it's mostly because of how these new lenses handle the edges. So on the other models, you have these really hard straight lines on the sides. So like even small head shifts from side to side 
side made the cropping look really noticeable. But with the pros, the lens have this curvature that kind of softens that cutoff. Like it better matches the shape of your eyes. So I feel like your brain just doesn't notice it as much. Now this curvature benefit does mostly carry over when you're using the ultra wide mode with a computer. Obviously the wider field of view on here does help you get more content in view, although you still have to move your head around since it isn't wide enough to fully simulate an ultra wide monitor like a VR headset can. But what I found is that the lens curvature just doesn't make you feel as boxed in as with the standard X-Real one. Now you still do see hard lines at the top and the bottom with full 16 by nine content. And I actually think that's where the wider field of view comes into play. Because what I've been doing is I've been stepping down the 170 one inch screen size to 154 in the settings, which is still bigger than the standard model while giving you extra margin around all of the edges to absorb any head movements. And for me, this has translated into keeping the immersion fully intact. So yeah, I've really been enjoying these. I mean, they're still 1080p, so like it's not crystal clear around stuff like text, but for watching movies and playing games on here, these things are pretty awesome. Now, that being said, it's not all upgrades across the board with these new lenses, since there are some trade-offs. Like I mentioned before, the reflections on here have been pretty much eliminated from anything directly underneath you. And technically, it's also a bit brighter at 700 nits versus 600, although I wasn't really able to notice that. But overall, I still feel like the clarity on the standard x ones is a bit better. The edges on those are basically clear all the way through, whereas on here, you do notice some blurring around the edges. Now, for movies and games, this doesn't really matter a whole lot, since usually there isn't a whole lot of important stuff sitting at the edges of the frame. But if you're trying to use these as a monitor for work, especially for reading text, you will find yourself needing to move your head more in order to stay in that sweet spot. That's not really a deal breaker for me personally, since I mainly use these for watching movies. And for that, these are hands down an upgrade. Now, before we wrap up though, there are a few extra tidbits that I wanted to cover since they're kind of cool. So the first thing is these glasses have an auto transparency mode where like before you can manually adjust the electrochromic dimming by using the rocker or the quick action button. But now if you're in anchor mode and you turn your head to look at something, the dimming automatically turns off. So you can actually check your surroundings. And then when you return your gaze, it turns right back on. Like it's super smooth and it makes things feel a lot more natural. The second tidbit is unlike the standard model, the Pro models here come in two different hardware IPD sizes. So you'll definitely want to measure your IPD before picking one of these up since you know there is going to be one size that fits you better than the other. And then third, because of how the new lenses are designed, they do actually provide a little bit more privacy from the front where, you know, compared to the older models, what you're looking at on screen is a little bit less visible to someone on the outside looking at you. And then finally, while this technically works on both the standard model and the Pro models, the X-Real Eye is now available. So this little camera is sold separately and it plugs right into the accessory port at the bottom of the glasses, taking you from having three degrees of freedom to a full six degrees of freedom tracking. Meaning not only can you anchor the screen relative to your head, but you could actually pin it in 3D space walk away from it, and the screen will stay exactly where you left it. It actually works pretty well. And what's cool is the camera also lets you capture photos and videos from this really nice first person point of view, which it doesn't produce the best images to be honest, like it's not something to write home about, but the fact that they even let you do it is nice and you can actually customize the action button so you can just press it and it'll snap a photo or a video with a single press. But yeah, that is the X-Real One Pro. And for the most part, I would say that these are a solid upgrade, especially if your main use case is content consumption, where you're getting a bigger screen, you get better anchor mode thanks to that wider field of view and the new lens curvature, there are almost no reflections, and overall, it's just a way more immersive experience. Now, if your primary focus is on productivity, where you're working with a lot of text and you need the full edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, I would probably still lean towards the standard models since they are a bit clearer, but if you're looking to play games and watch movies and just have a massive screen, to be honest, I think these new AR glasses 
are actually the ones a lot of people have been waiting for. And right now, x -Real is running a special where you can pick them up for $50 less than the usual price at just $599. I'll be putting all the links and info you need down below in the description. But anyways, that is it for me in this video. Big thanks to x -Real for sponsoring the showcase. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.